You are watching ESPN's Feast Week. It's presented by Lowe's. Yeah, dancy has been all over that place. Jimmy danced in the sea lion area. He's danced on the beaches. He danced in that big tower there to the right. He's just been dancing. He was dancing with Scott Drew just a little while ago. Of course, the head coach of the champion Baylor Bears. This is the bad boy mowers battle for Atlantis. Real tight game yesterday. BCU, the Rams three and three. And they take on the University of Connecticut Huskies at five and one. They battled Michigan State, BCU lost to Baylor. Alongside Jimmy Dykes, dancing Jimmy Dykes, whatever you want to call him, he's here and he knows basketball as well as anybody. And he's looking forward to this game. Connecticut is one of those teams we just saw what Baylor could do, what Michigan State could do. UConn could easily have been in the championship game. Oh, absolutely. I think they're Elite Eight good. They can absolutely beat you up as well. They're up against a rock fight today, though. VCU, yeah. there's no back down from these guys in the black uniforms out of the A-10. What are they going to do with Adama Sanogo, though, is the biggest question for me if you're VCU, because this kid has been so good, Ravi. Established seeing that low position around the restricted arc and just going to work. His shoulders are so impressive, so quick, so strong, so hard to guard. And VCU, they're going to have to come with a double team on him if then he starts spraying it around a little bit. This UConn team is really good. I'm sure they're a little tired right now, a little beat up, but they can have no back down right now because these guys from Richmond, Virginia, they have a bunch of junkyard dogs. <laughs> they mix it up, which means Jamie Lucky and Jeb Hartness and Tony Henderson, the officials, keep their eyes open for all that pushing and shoving, which we expect to see today. I wonder, is there any deflation factor for Connecticut being that close to a championship game? I know VCU was, but UConn was in that game. UConn led that game by about five late in the game. Yeah, I, I think you have to guard against it if you're UConn, absolutely right. I mean, you were right there with a chance to play for the championship, and now here you are 24 hours later against VCU, a hungry, hungry squad. Both coaches, especially Danny Hurley, will learn a lot about the competitive juice, the competitive fire of his guys today. All right, Isaiah Whaley is in the starting lineup for UConn. He has the ball. Now, remember, he fainted after game one. They kept him out yesterday. Said if it was a night game, they may have played him, but they kept him out. It was attributed to dehydration, and he gets called for a five-second violation. Can someone get open? Kind of what Danny Hurley was yelling at his team about. Can somebody get open? We take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Atlantis. Nunn, Curry, Stockard, the transfer has been outstanding. Williams Jr. and Hassan Ward played for the most part above the rim yesterday, and he came yeah. crashing down to <laughs> earth <did>. three <laughs> or four times. He spent more time above the rim <laughs> than below the rim. That's him throwing up a right-handed hook, no good, and the rebound goes to Sonogo. It just feels like this game may take a few minutes for everybody to get on track. Well, you're going to have to fight for your catch spot against VCU. They push you out as well as anybody in their league. Tyrese Martin was phenomenal yesterday. Fade away, fell short for about the 14th time on this floor in the last three days. Now that horse, Not just him. The horse overall. is wounded. You're starting to beat it really bad, but you're right. The Which fade away <laughs> shots have not gone huh. It's not, on just floor, not, not just this floor. This doesn't work. <laughs> PCU, as good as they are defensively, they really struggle, labor to find points on the offensive end. They got to get it on the glass. They have to find a way to get some in transition today, talking about the team in black. Now Cole had a chance for a three. Now Whaley will fire away, and that's in. How about Isaiah Whaley knocking down a three-pointer to get UConn on the board? But he sounded really good yesterday, talking to you and I on the bench, just precautionary reasons to hold him out. We completely 100% get it. But he, he, to me, he changes UConn's team, that anchor spot. That's a nice play. None draws the foul from Cole and lays it up high off the window. It was serious Wednesday, though. After the game, just as we were transitioning to our next game, Isaiah Whaley slid out of his chair. And Danny Hurley was celebrating and congratulating the opposing coach when he ran back. And you see Whaley there. He attributed it to 43 minutes and perhaps being dehydrated. And again, they left him out yesterday. I gotta think it's in the back of his head. You know, am I, am I okay? Am I gonna be all right here? Yeah. And I'm glad to see him back on the floor, but there is a hint of anxiety. You know, Whaley knocks down a three. If, if he can make one a game and end up with 25 or 33 point makes on the year, 
Well, that's a really big boost to UConn's offense. VCU doing what they do. They're pressuring everywhere. <laughs> Sunogo, oh, look charge. out, just clearing space out with his left hand. We went hand, shoulder, lowered the body, and threw yeah. the defender out of the way. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes like yes. we learned in kindergarten because he hits him with everything. <laughs> That's just, and where are you? He's driving the ball towards the <laughs> S. The goal is over here, four letters to your left. Yeah, but I needed to go S then to the hoop. <laughs> he had a whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> love him, though. I, I, when he, even when he runs over somebody, I still love the guy. Kind of a big game, it feels like, for a cook, a cook, number 11, who's in now with Sonogo going to the bench. Whaley, yeah, good patience. Ball right over him, really good patience from Stockard. Couple of quick ball fakes. A cook, a cook, though, for the most part, two games in, really hasn't been a factor at all, and he has the skill level to be very, very important and very good. Whaley will shoot the jumper that goes halfway down and out. You agree on 11? A cook, a cook? Y yes, he's got to get back to being what he was the first two or three ball game. I came in to the battle for Atlantis expecting him to do some really special stuff. Didn't get to play a lot in the first game. I don't know if he got his dauber down or not, but man, you got, you, got, you got to fight for everything you get with Danny Hurley. Yeah, ball was lost. Cole has it. He's got some numbers ahead of him if he sees him. It's Jackson with Martin in the corner. Woo! Whoop. Three hands Whoop. blocked that shot. Keyshawn Curry will run the point along with Jaden Nunn. Three ball, no good. And a cook able to reel that in. Here's Martin. He had a couple of highlight shows yesterday. And the foul on Stockard will send Tyrese Martin to the free throw line. A senior out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Rev, you, you got to get back. You can't just run back because... That's what you're supposed to do. You got to run back with a purpose, man. You got to run back, pointing, talking, meeting people, stopping the ball, and not letting the angles come with runners to the rim. Led the Big East in offensive rebounds last year. Tyrese Martin, I've talked about the last two days, but you're trying to keep him off the glass the next four months with your two guard. Good luck with that. <laughs> McKeel Brown Jones, number two, checks in for VCU as Martin's free throw is good by four, just underway. Bit of a resume type, you know, when we're in the room. VCU tends to be a tournament team anyway, but this is a big opportunity here to add a solid win if you can knock out UConn. Nice good cut. backdoor move wow. and a cut, but a little too deep on the shot for Keyshawn Curry. Yeah, v VCU without two starters right now. They're only going to get better as the year goes on. They get healthy. That recovery, length, speed, explosiveness of 44 and white, as good as the Big East is going to have this year. Four on the shot clock, three. Three ball is good with... A defender in his face, Keyshawn Curry, shot right over. The man you said is so good, Andre Jackson. The UCU's playing with a hot ball, though, on offense, aren't they? That thing is humming around the perimeter. How about Cole, RJ Cole? You love him since you've seen him, and he gets the floater to go. C-O-L-E blooded. Williams, and he wasn't going anywhere, and Tyrese Martin said, we weren't tough enough at the end of that game. And a little toughness there. Martin, as he mix it up with Jalen Deloach. Is pushing and shoving and yapping toughness? Seriously? No, that's not. That's fake toughness. That thank you. Thank yeah. you. You're finally coming along. I feel where you're at. Swimming with the Sharks is toughness here, man. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Builds a better mower, mow with an attitude. Atlantis Paradise, Island Bahamas at heart, and Manscaped. Level up your grooming game at manscaped.com. Get a little scared, a little antsy walking across that bridge, too. That thing shakes a little bit on you. Sometimes you just got to let it breathe, you know? This would be a time. Yeah. That was a celebration Mike Rhodes had after <laughs> winning the first game, getting into the winner's bracket. That's called the chopper, by the way. 
I thought so. That when you have the hands high on yeah. that on that long motor. I'm all in on Mike Rhodes though. And this guy's all about havoc and defense and toughness. Don't let the other team punk you. And they guard their tails off. They came into the island on the top 1% in college basketball in terms of defensively in the half court. They give you nothing. And they will give UConn nothing today. And they dealt with some pretty big injuries. They lost Jameer Watkins and Jaron McAllister both to ACL injuries in like the same week. McAllister missed 2021, recovering from a left ACL tear. And then the poor kid tears his right ACL. Brutal. They are going to get their point guard, Ace Baldwin, back sometime in January. So a lot of guys have had to do things that they weren't necessarily ready to do, prepared to do. Yep. Only one team has scored over 59 points on VCU all year through six games. That was Baylor yesterday, got 69 on them. But Ace Baldwin is a 10, 11 point guy. VCU only averaging 55. That will be a big boost when he comes back. Sure will. Seven on the shot clock for Williams. Current into the game. He has it. Tough shot with Pauly all over him as he's in the game. That's a shot clock violation. Didn't hit anything. And Deloach got it and threw it up with the red box illuminated. I like Deloach. He's a, a real raw talent. Comes from an athletic family. His sister ran track at Ohio State. His brother played football at Florida State. And you know what I'm looking forward to seeing today? The car waiting for us out back? No, 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 no. No, that I anticipate already. We're good there. I'm anticipating Jordan Hawkins having a good game. Freshman who turned that ball over in the first yeah. game, which cost him. He's such a good shooter. Flex cut. Cole three. That is short. No, I hear you on Jordan Hawkins. I mean, he does some things that are just electric. Nunn steps right into that, right over Cole, soft on the rim, and look at the battle for the rebound. It's Whaley who ends up with it after it hits the ground. Polly's a three-point threat. He's over on the left wing. And yeah, UConn can't score, right? Not right now. They blitz that ball, man. They make the dribbler. Go another two or three bounces. They're not worried about the roll guy because of the intense heat they put on the ball. Martin, a cook. Misses the three from the corner. And UConn out of the gate, two of seven. And VCU, three of nine. Took a while to this game to warm up. That's a nice three. None given too much space by Cole. Get two feet in the paint. Defense has to respect it. Wide open slot three. Man, that was one second away, weren't they? Yeah. Nunn has six of the 11 for VCU. So now going Gaffney, we're about set to check in for Connecticut. Do you know how hard you have to work against a defense like this? You've got to set screens, man. You've got to find jerseys and seek them out. You've got to own your spots. You've got to climb on the glass. Look out. Good hustle by Whaley. He goes to the ground. So does Brown Jones. They're both back up. Ravi, it, it, it's a fight first. Then the basketball game happens after that when you're playing VCU. But if you don't get the fight part down, you got no shot. Oh, late to get it to a cook. And that ball blocked by Brown Jones out of bounds off a cook, a cook. A couple of threes missed, and they had a chance for a layup. A little late to get it to him here. Yeah, but, I mean, you gotta, you got to get at least to the free throw line right there, correct? I mean, ball fake, be tough, go through somebody's chin to the rim. I don't know if UConn completely understands yet what they're up against for the next 33 minutes in this game. Nichols is into the game along with Kern. That stalker who's really been their offensive star in the first couple of games. And he and Sonogo, you got a heavyweight battle going down there in the blocks. Can he drive him? Wanted to. Threw it up with his left hand. That's good defense by Adama Sonogo. That yeah, sure was. Hawkins is into the game 24 for UConn. Terrific shooter. Sonogo will throw one up. That's good. Wasn't sure if he was going to think about the window or just straight in, and it ended up straight in. Yeah, uh, just a beautiful job of a short roll by Sonogo. 
Hawkins comes over to help, and it's to no avail against the big fella, Stockard. An interesting career path for Levi Stockard. K-State for three years, played only three times in 100 games. Transfers to VCU in 2020 and starts all 25, Jimmy, and all six this season. Yeah, he's a good low player. Low in terms of his damage is done below the rim. Hawkins, That's a charge. yeah, it looked like it. Nope, what? we're going to get a block. Maybe a late move there defensively by Stockard, but Hawkins committed, and it was set up to be called an offensive. Is Stockard set before Hawkins leaves the ground? Now he's moving into him. I guess the right call. You know how hard that call is? It, it, it's extremely difficult, and, and until you've actually tried to do it, you don't understand it. I talked about in the last game what would help that call more than anything is judge the offensive player when the plant foot goes down. The legal defender has to be established at that point, not when they are coming up off the ground. Would help the play be officiated cleaner. Levi Stockard goes to the bench with two fouls. We'll take a timeout. 11.56 to go. Just underway. 13-8 Rams. What a great way to start the morning with a paddleboard lesson from Alara. What's the few things I need to know to stay safe on this board? Well, Jimmy, just make sure that you embrace your core. Embrace my core. You stay calm. Stay calm. And don't fall in. And don't fall in. Because if I fall in, I'm really concerned. We got sharks and stingrays and all kinds of sea creatures. It's okay. And th this is not going to end. If I fall in, what's below me is the problem. It is okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You, you, you were in a pool. It, it, there were no sharks or anything underneath you. We're not sure of that still. We're convinced. We no, are, we're still not sure. You know what? Beyond a reasonable doubt, <laughs> they didn't exist there. <laughs> Baylor goes 3 0. They win the championship. Michigan State 2 1. We'll see who ends up on the winning side here VCU or UConn. Auburn, an awfully impressive team, and they didn't have and don't have their best player, Alan Flanagan. Think about where Auburn's going to be in about a month and a half. That'd Syracuse be. got a win last night. They found their shooting stroke. Auburn's going to be right in the thick of things in the SEC race is where they're going to be with Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida. Wow, LSU loaded up this year. I did yoga on that paddleboard, by the way. You know who paddleboards? You? Absolutely. It's a honus. He's into the game, and he knocks one down off the rim. I am a paddle boarder. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I, I, that's why I'm showing. I'm telling. But in a pool where there's no waves, it's pretty easy. Hawkins to the hole. There you go. You called for him. First two minutes of the ball game. BC do you doing a good job of creating offense though in other ways to their half court to get on the glass. They got some transition stuff. Good job by Sonogo to cover a fast slip by Ward off the ball screen. Watch out. High screen on Polly, so Curry will try to take Martin. That's that is Martin one-on-one -on -one defense, as good as anybody we've seen here. Yes, guarding a two or a three. And Ravi, what I like about him, he will rebound no matter where you put him on the floor. He switches out on the point guard, the shot goes, boom, he's gonna box off and go get it. He's covering a four, the same thing, and he can rebound from all four spots. So Honus is a junior guard out of Portland, Oregon. He'll inbound the ball. Kern will come out. He'll be replaced by Vince Williams, the lefty, who averaged 10 and 5 last season. That worked beautifully. Sonogo got caught looking, and sneaking in behind him was Ward for an easy dunk. That's what VCU has to have in this game, Ravi, just finding ways to get body blow, tough, dirty baskets. Net at the rim. Good job there was the defender, Nichols Jr., who went up for the block. And they got a 17-10 lead here. And Connecticut needs to wake up against VCU's tough defense. They're going to get that moving screen. That happens all the time, every game. UConn just not alert on the out-of-bounds under. And Sonogo gets his body off of his guy, miscommunication. 
And you just read the slip and dunk it home. That wasn't a great out-of-bounds play. That was just bad defense by UConn. Gaffney will try, and he will end up shooting free throws. Ravi, you know if your team is at the magic level ready to play as a coach in a couple of areas. First of all, how are we covering ball screens right off the, pop, right off the top? Are we doing what we talked about doing on ball screen coverage? The, the second thing, what about our out-of-bounds under defense? Are we locked in and dialed in on that? Are we alert? We have our arms on people. Are we, are we fighting and scrapping? A couple of areas that I know Dan Hurley is concerned with right now early. Gaffney pressed into play when that foul yesterday was called against Cole. He ended up taking a heave late in the game when time was running down and so were their chances and he missed and getting Cole his fifth foul proved to be a big part of that game as Hurley said after. We didn't lose because of that call but it certainly impacted the game. Yeah, absolutely it did. Gaffney has played in every game since he's been on that campus in store since his freshman year. He has logged a lot of minutes. Well, Ward rolled and there was nobody there guarding him for a second. Shooting over Jackson's never easy, but it leads to a long rebound, and Curry comes up with it. UConn is not hitting a black jersey when the ball's in flight. They're turning and watching. Nichols has Hawkins underneath the basket with a size mismatch. Curry, is that a travel? That's a block by Hawkins. He comes over to help. And now on the floor, he dives for it, has it, and lost it. The travel. We're going to get a foul, I think, on Hawkins. He came over the top and got Nichols on the head. Well, that's third game in three days effort right here. Hawkins on the floor, dive on it right there. I thought he had control of it and then rolled. I thought that should have been a travel, but VCU, they, I think VCU has won more 50-50 balls over the last three days than any other team here. Jimmy Nichols is getting some meaningful minutes here early in this one, 5-5 for VCU. Martin switches, he switches again. That's a tough shot from Nichols. You say tough, I say bad. Yeah, bad is right. We're going to get a call here. Martin is getting, getting hit on the arm. Reminder, everybody, the ESPN Events Invitational in Orlando, the semifinal, the Jayhawks of Kansas. Dick Vitale call on that game. It's 23-14 right now, Jayhawks. Iona Belmont ESPNU championship game Sunday at 7 on the ESPN Networks. Iowa, big league win over Alabama. Iona, I should say, yesterday. It was an incredible win for Rick Pitino's team. And you, can, you, you could see it building a few years ago. Oh, what a shot there. He is a highlight reel himself. Jackson went high. Switched to the left and used the window. I like those two freshmen for Baylor making plays out of the corner. Exactly. He's just as fast, if not faster, making good back cut. Sure was. Ooh, Martin man. goes straight up, and the body not enough to affect Vince Williams. The back cut was terrific. The, 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 the pass by Deloach was phenomenal. Jackson wants to do it again. Sonogo working hard to get position, and Cole dumps it into the big fella. 6-9, and that's going to be a hold on Deloach. Ravi, De Deloach is a 6-8 freshman. Talked about his raw talent. Watch him right here. Left-handed pass, like a just, a just a little bit of a gap pass. Really well done on the hard cut by Vince Williams. He threw that left here, or was it a kind of a backhand right? Well, he's kind right. of going to his left and kind of a backhand right slider, tough to hit on 3-2 <laughs> count type pass. Thanks for the baseball and now Jay always helping <laughs> Jimmy the partner. Look Big out, Martin rebound. just got thrown oh, down man. to the ground. So he's, he's going back home as Nikhil Brown-Jones grabbed him by the neck and fired him down. He's got a bad left wrist. Get the arm sleeve on the right-hand side. It's, He's a bad man on the glass is what he is. Look at those shoulders. I mean, he is ferocious as an offensive rebounder. Reads the ball really well, and he rebounds in traffic from that two-guard spot as good as anyone in the country right now from that position. 
He's looking for Jamie Lucky to dry the basketball off. He had it. Said, nope. A little sweat on it. We've got to dry that thing off. When you're shooting free throws, you want that basketball just just totally dry, Jamie? Yeah. I want I want I want the ball dry, but I want us to get going. Yeah, you want it dry or you want it hot? I think he just <laughs> heated that thing up. <laughs> Uh. Seems like everybody's going to be looking up at Villanova in the Big East, right? From what we've seen. Feels that way, although this is certainly a team. Hurley has talked a lot about some of his coaching idols and programs and cultures they build. Calhoun, of course, here at Connecticut, but Izzo was another one of his dad with all his success in New Jersey at that high school level and yeah there, there's a feeling around the program that they are certainly on the right path to getting back there with the recruits with the guys stand they have zero transfers on this team yeah, one of what four or five in the country not to take one 1700 or so transfers last year they had zero that is a tough shot or as you'd say not necessarily a good one Jackson pushes Cole Bottom. Three ball, and all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. It just seems like nine times out of ten, if you get the ball from one third of the floor to the opposite third of the floor in transition, you're going to get a really good look. I thought you were going to say nine times out of ten after a bad shot, the other team comes down and gets a fairly good one. You know why? The bad shot bone is connected to the bad transition defense bone. You ever heard that song? No, but please give us a little sing it to us, Dr. Jimmy. The bad bones connected to, to the, the bad shot bone is connected to the bad transition defense bone. It's connected to the good shot zone. Meant to take a lost bone. Oh boy. Over to it, Zubin. Thank you very much. Let me tell you something, please. If you want to learn something about basketball, listen to when John Crispin does a game. If you don't want to, that's fine too. But I just you learn something. I do when I listen to him. All right, what do you learn about this graphic and, <laughs> and where West Virginia falls? Are they five? Are they six? Are they're, they seven? Well, what are they? This is a, in graphics world, that's how you build it when they're tied for fifth in the preseason poll. Those top three are all legitimate contenders for the final four. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced absolutely on Baylor. I think they're the third best team in college in the, in the country right now. That graphic stuff makes sense to you now? Sure does. Thank you. If ever I want to learn something, though, I know. I'd rather be sitting next to Crispin than you. <laughs> Get it out of here, right? You mentioned Jim Calhoun earlier. You know, he retired last week from Division III St. Joseph College, 79 years old, and 26 years, I believe, at UConn, three national titles, Hall of Fame coach, and he built UConn into UConn. Did he was the predecessor there, of course, to where the women's program went. Big fan of Calhoun's, friend of Jim's. He does incredible work with he and his wife in the Jim and Pat Calhoun Cardiology Center up at the University of Connecticut Health Center. His presence in the state and the things that he does off the basketball court when he stepped away, a lot of folks were surprised. He, he said, you step away when the things are going really well. Mm -hmm. And he thinks he's got things going really well. So he steps away to spend some more time with his wife and his kids and his grandchildren. You know, Calhoun is a good, good man. Yeah, Coach, if you're watching, you're one of the best to ever do it. You don't need me to tell you that, but that's how you're thought of. And growing up where I did, I understood everything the coach said. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, everything. And you can't make a soft pass. We talked about the last game as well. VCU is going to press you out with their ball pressure, and they're going to press you out with their denial pressure. There's two parts of pressure in basketball. What are you doing to the ball, and what are you doing to the next pass that the ball could be made? VCU is outstanding in both of those areas. You know, Mike Rhodes was really good about dealing with those injuries that we talked about. I mean, every team's going to have them. They happen so quickly, but they need to happen early, unfortunately, in the ramp up to the season. So you have a lot of time to adjust, and right. hopefully your peak can come. But boy, his ability to kind of perspective everything, really helpful for these kids. He's a really good coach. Had his team in the NCAA tournament last year, got taken away because of a COVID protocol. But 
Look out, step through. Drive. Whaley was there to try to help on defense, and here comes Connecticut. Five white jerseys on the run. Jackson, the floater, too strong. And how about VCU going up in the middle of all those shirts and coming down with it? It was Deloach. Pull up too strong, rebound, better touch, but not good enough. Jackson in traffic. And now all of a sudden a track meet's breaking out here in the Bahamas. Gaffney, three ball. Eight of 23 is VCU, six of 18, Connecticut. Mm, Sonogo Almost. nearly had it. Got to make them pay when they gamble. Ooh, Whaley got punched in the face there. As Brown Jones went for a rebound. Jackson's three is in and out. Sonogo's getting wrapped up. A rare pass out from the post. I, I literally have no idea what just happened. Neither does Mike Rhodes. That almost looked like we're, we're just going to bring some guys in. Yeah, I think everybody's Stop tired. We need new players. I mean, that's what it There's felt a, like. A flop warning. Have I told you how I feel about the flop warning? Yeah, but I didn't even. Do, I didn't. I missed the flop. I missed the flop too. But wh why in the world are we still having to give a warning when they're now three or four years in? So the flop, flop call. It's a foul. If you're going to yes. flop, it's a foul. Yeah, yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. It's in kindergarten anymore. We don't need to keep warning people. And the rules committee tried to get the warning out of the game and the. Oversight committee wouldn't allow it. That mm. was a mistake by them. And every official will tell you the same thing. They don't like giving the warning call. They want it out as well. Just if it's a flop, boom, call it. Shoot the free throws and let's go. You know, Get it out of the game. Gets called for the foul. I, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> At some point, the warning just, boot, we're done with that. No, exactly. Like a little kid. Yes. I've, how many times? We're not warning we're anymore. We're not warning you anymore. Yeah. Kennedy. Tell you 10 o'clock, that's 10 o'clock. Yeah, once again, my family's dialed in. She just texted me a little while ago. Dad, what time's your game start? <laughs> that, we, well, which we're one? into the, the second game. The yeah. Second. yeah. <laughs> yep. Out of sight, out of mind. Yep. Jimmy, not on the radar. <laughs> off radar, off grid. <laughs> Let's see if the seal on the basket is off. Nope. I mean, it feels like it's been a while since we've had a basket. <laughs> because it has been. M misses do not bother VCU. They used to win in games with a low number. This is a club that held Vanderbilt, Scotty Pippen Jr., who is an electric guard. They held Vanderbilt to 37 points on Vanderbilt's floor. It's got the feel of a day three of three when you were close to being in the championship, but you weren't. It sure does. Jackson oh, wow. follow again. Man, he plays above the rim. Ooh, that looked like that came out of the rim. We're going to get a goaltending. I didn't see that. That ball looked like it was out of the rim. But because I think it was, Ravi. I mean, Andre Jackson, his first jump is so good. And his second, that, there it is. Come out. Well, if any part of the ball is above the cylinder, you got to leave it alone. And I, from that angle, it looked like it was off the cylinder. Whaley, tough defense and a tough shot. That's Polly's shot. Step right into the three, just too strong. He goes again, gets hit, and throws it up, so he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Is any part of the ball still above the rim, the cylinder, when Andre Jackson gets his paw on it? There's the first attempt. Now watch, is it coming all the way off? Man, that was, I think it was all the way off. I, it, 
It's like the guy who stands outside the arc, but if you said maybe his maybe his backside is actually over the arc. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Was a was was one of the slivers of the ball over the cylinder while 98 percent of it was off. Yeah, I, 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 to me, as an official, that's one of those plays. Unless it's absolutely certain, you count the basket. You're an offensive guy. Favor the offense. I, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I like where you're at. Soft, can't play in tough games. Finesse. It's been three and a half minutes since our last field goal. Here we go, boys. The only team to go over 60 on VCU this year, yep. Baylor yesterday. That's how good they are defensively. UConn right there with them. There you have it. Nunn breaks the seal as he buries a three. Tough game today for UConn. They're, they are Elite Eight good, but they have been through a war and find themselves up against a VCU team that a bunch of junkyard dogs. Talked about him yesterday. Danny Hurley's squad's up against a bunch of guys that don't care what time the game is or who we're playing. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. And Liberty Mutual Insurance only pay for what you need. That is not the pool that you are on the paddleboard above. That's not it. <laughs> Already back in attendance here. Son, one of the coaches with UConn. Maybe he, maybe he gives the halftime speech. All the stars have been in the ballroom, correct? Bill Murray, Leslie Visser from CBS Sports. Hoops Wise was here earlier. I thought I saw Usher. Yeah, Usher was here. Miss Reed there will go the other way as Cole started to cut to the hoop. Whaley continued that thought, but Cole stopped the thought. Was it really Usher or just a guy who had Usher written on the back of his T-shirt? <laughs> it was a guy that had Usher on the back of his T-shirt. Okay. But hey, it's, not, it's not a false statement what we said. Usher no. is here. <laughs> Many of them. Mm. Good take. Really good really take good there. Take, yeah. Use that backboard and basket to prevent any block. Kern he, laid it in. He has an attack game straight out of St. Louis. Not afraid. Jackson to Whaley. The game just kind of wild and, and ugly, as Chris said in the studio. Yeah. And sometimes you got to win ugly. And then today is going to be that opportunity for UConn. VCU's used to they it. They like that. Exactly. Yeah. Another hard tick. Who got them? Polly with a body? It was Tyler Polly. Foul number one. 17 foul against UConn. VCU comes into this tournament uh, well, as of yesterday morning. I actually didn't look it up today, but they had the third best effective field goal percentage defense in the country. That's when you factor in the value of a three point shot. The third best in the country. Now that's top level high end defense that UConn's up against in this game. They got to the winner's bracket by holding Buddy Beheim to six out of seven shooting from the floor, only two out of ten from the three-point line. They, they set the tone in that game early. And Jackson lost that ball, too. VCU pestered from behind. And a push by Nunn. Ooh. Cross-court, Kern. Great dish. Whaley there to help. That's Whaley doing those little things, switching off as Gaffney drives. That's denied at the rim. <laughs> it's a bit of a wild mess right now. Your turn. That's slayed up and laid in. Where's the transition defense? Danny Hurley's going to ask the same question. And just running it right up our backside. We're not protecting the elbows. We're not protecting the rim. As a result, you look up, we're down 28 to 20. Uh, he's hoping his team can match his intensity because he is running warm right now. Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravich, Isaiah Whaley playing today after taking yesterday off. First game right at the end fainted and they attributed it to dehydration. So he's back on the floor and in a really important part of 
what Connecticut does. There's all sorts of adjectives you can apply to each player. Whaley's like the glue guy on this team. He does whatever yep. is asked, and this is a this is an older team. Whaley and Polly back for a fifth year. He will not will not get you 10 to 20 points a game, but he will affect 20 to 30 points every yeah, game. Yeah, he sure will. You know, VCU, they don't they don't get a lot of opportunities to play against teams like Syracuse, Baylor, UConn. Man, the fire they have in their gut when they get a chance. He is hard to play against for 40 minutes. Well, they protect the elbows, don't they? Yeah, they, they protect did. the elbows. Look out. No contact there. Hassan Ward hit the ground. He's going to hit the ground again. Cole uses the right hand to float back up. Well, they are sitting in those gaps. Hard ball pressure and heavy gap pressure. And they get a turnover because of Go, you got numbers. Go. Whaley fell down, and that's going to be a oh charge. Oh, my goodness, Ravi. You got the numbers. You have a five-on-four numbered break, and you run smooth over someone. A mistake made by Keyshawn Curry. It is five-on-four because Whaley is way behind the play. And you've got to have a better awareness, a better understanding of what we're doing on the offensive end. Keyshawn Curry with an explosive game. But UConn is in a drought, Jimmy. Even in the Bahamas with all this water around us. Right. Oh, for their last 11. That's not good. You know, the anchor is not on the floor with Sonogo. It really changes how you have to defend UConn when he's not. Well, we got some guys that can stretch you out here with Pauly and Hawkins on the floor. Empty corner ball screen. Good. Keep the ball moving. Just keep it moving. Pauly steps through, and there here's you Hawkins. Go. There you go. That, 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 go that, that should have gone in. <laughs> Whaley cleans up the miss on the glass. <laughs> that just should have gone yeah, in. Yeah, just should have gone in because the ball movement was really good. You know, the, 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 the ball knows when it deserves to go in, and it knows when it doesn't deserve to go in. It's one of the uncommon facts that people don't realize about a basketball. Whaley with the hedge and a little bounce to Gaffney. He misses. Count it. Count it. Well, Gaffney appeared to run into our cameraman down beneath the basket, so we got a real good shot of him as he gets back up. Rev, I will say this about UConn. They do understand how to win a, a, a dirty game, an ugly game. I mean, they're from a very physical Big East, and Danny has built his roster to understand how to handle adversity and how to fight through things. And they've been stung a little bit in this first 20 minutes. I think this was a get your legs under you first half. I think the second half of this game is going to be very competitive and, and played differently. The same play, Haley, Whaley nearly had another one. Three ball, no good, and Hawkins will go. They got three seconds. Get it up, get it up, Two, get it up, get it up. one. Oh, that's, that's a, a foul. foul. Why? Cole's going to go to the line to shoot three. And Jamie Lucky is talking to Tony the, Henderson. The only issue is, did he foul after the horn? Because he clearly fouled him. He clubbed him. Well, that is close, Jimmy. You're right. It there is. may be three zeros on that clock. Yeah. Man, just a just a bad, poor choice. I, I, you love the effort and the fight out of the kids from VCU. And I'm, not, I'm not sure who it was with a foul, but your half-court defense has been so, so good. You don't want to give three easy ones right before the half. Watch the clock. When did the foul occur is what you're looking for on that monitor. That is uh, literally as it's it, going it's, it's from point one to zero. It's it, yeah. There, that's right at the one to zero. I, I think it's right before it got to triple zero. I agree. Now the foul, the actual contact, it's precedes there. the whistle. Yeah, now that, that they're going to shoot three. 
Because when, when did the foul occur? Not when the whistle was blown on a foul right now. I, th I think they're looking at when did the foul occur. Point one, and they will shoot three. He's shooting a th he was shooting a three. Yeah. He was behind the three-point line, correct? Uh, he he I mean, was that's behind that's the, the, the three-point shot, that the basket they're shooting at, but he was in front of the three-point shot <laughs> that they were defending. So we're going to give him two and a half. <laughs> Stay hot. <laughs> I'm just going with what I'm, – I'm just going with the whole general feel of the, of the building right now. You were about to sell your producer out, but you bit your tongue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's about to sell the refs out. <laughs> yep. Jamie Lucky looking over to confirm that it was the right call. I gave him the thumbs up, and we're all good. That has happened several times. Then they've looked to you <laughs> for confirmation. <laughs> You're the, you are the conscience of the officials. <laughs> they know that I'm all in with these guys. Seriously. Like, I, I know how hard they work, how much film study they do. The, the layers of accountability on these guys is greater than most jobs out there across the country. <laughs> okay. Studio, please help us out. <laughs> please help us out. <laughs> Studio for the E-Trade Halftime Report, Zubin and John Crispin. ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. We have spent the last four or five days right here at Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas. Many of the crew will be there at some point today, tonight, enjoying themselves before they make their way back to the home, wherever they may be. As we take a look at the Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis, VCU and UConn, not a great first half. The first half stats brought to you by Atlantis. That may be putting it politely, but it certainly has lowered the bar so that what you look forward to in the second half is going to be better than what we saw yeah, is. in the first half. A lot of turnovers, a lot of sloppy play, poor shooting. But now that they recognize the opponent, have their legs under them, what do you expect? They better come out and fight, talking about UConn, because I know the team in black's not going to go away in that part of the game. UConn, the last eight minutes of the first half, Ravi, they were two out of 14 from the field. Yeah, that wasn't good. Okay, so if you're offensive sensitive today as a group on either squad, you're in for a long next 20 minutes, because if the shot doesn't go and you give up on the other parts of the game, the dirty parts of the game, climbing on the glass, fighting for loose balls, come up with some transition points, you're going to walk out of here with a loss. None had 11 points for VCU to lead the way. Nobody in double figures for UConn. Cole had seven, but he also missed five shots. Sonogo was one of one. And you wonder if Sonogo, who really took off yesterday in the second half, will do similar today. Sonogo has had a 30-point game and three 20-point games this year. He's out hedging against none. They get the ball down low. And Stocker will try to work against Big 21. Good move. It's really good. A really good move, was it not? Just two, just two big bulls, man, going at each other inside the ring. Stocker got his shoulders spinning, and Sonogo could never catch up. Hard to get a dribble handoff against VCU. They, they, they pride themselves on blowing those things up. Yeah, Cole threw it up, though, and it was good. Hit the back iron and then fell right through. We stop it now, Jimmy. We've got both teams shooting 1,000. <laughs> Maybe we should. <laughs> handoff. Curry lost it on the way up. Had it. And this is a run out here. Jackson's got Martin. And that should be an easy layup, and it is. Good eyes by Jackson, was it not? He, he had the look ahead going before the ball ever got in his hands. Watch right here, tough shot by Nunn. And then Jackson gets a look at his eyes. I know where you are, bam, right there. Doesn't even put it down on the ground one time. Martin out in front of the defense. Screen the screener into the ball screen. Yeah, we, Sonogo just blows it up. We talked about that yesterday, how quick Sonogo is to recover yes. once he edges. Yes. 
Williams three, no good. And Jackson Skies outlet Sanogo. That is going to be called UConn basketball. It looked like Sanogo affected the direction of that ball more than the defender. They say Williams had his hand closer to the ball than Sanogo did. So Connecticut maybe with a little break there. He is just really quick, isn't he, for a guy his size? He lost the ball out of bounds. His ability to even go get that bad pass. Yeah, very explosive first, second step. What he has to learn going forward in Biggie's play as a sophomore right now, he's got to learn to pass the ball some. Mm -hmm. and that time, he had, he had nowhere to go, and he's still trying to force the play. 30-30, 17-52 to go in this one. Earlier today, Baylor knocked off Michigan State to win the battle for Atlanta's championship. Reverse it. Tan on the clock for Williams. Lefty on lefty. No good. Martin comes away with it. He throws it ahead to Cole, who takes it to the rack and threw it up. And there was very little chance that ball was not going to be blocked. He was looking for a foul rubbing the back of his head. It is crystal clear that Danny Hurley emphasized in the locker room that we have to get out and run. That their half court defense is too good for us to go up against for the next 20 minutes. And even if it's not there, just force it right now a little bit and see if we can get our, our offensive rebound involved in the transition game. Cole will launch a three right on. That's the old Kansas Jayhawk out of bounds play. Put your point guard, your shooting guard is the out of bounds trigger guy and you just circle him off up top. Bill Self runs that time after time after time. Back door move, likes dump off there. Jackson denies, and here come the Huskies again. There's a lot of contact and a block called as Martin drew the foul. He fell hard on that left arm of his, which has been bruised since Jump Street. And very slow to get up. In fact, not really getting up is McKeel Brown Jones for VCU. We have to take him out of the game, Jimmy. I'm not sure that VCU is aware of that. Yeah, he's he can't put hardly any pressure, can he? He's trying to trying to literally squeeze his hands and grit through it, but he's in some pain. Watch the out of bounds under again. Boy, in a, in a hard fought game like this, special team points are important. Go get Cole. Go get him. Go get him. Yeah, VCU just blitzed him. Look oh, out. Wow, it went really well done. The leg appears to be okay for Brown Jones. Martin, a little fadeaway that's been unsuccessful most of the time here. It has been. Documented well. VCU could have some success as much as, as UConn's pressuring Ravi. Lift the offense, burn that pressure off with a back cut, much like Baylor did to Michigan State to start the second half. That was unnecessary. Jackson slapped the ball away after the whistle had blown. And uh, the officials immediately went over and said, probably what you did. Don't do it again. So that, that is a common sense place for a warning. Not the flop. I feel you. I think Martin has blood on his hand, a floor burn. So that, that whole thing's got to be cleaned up here in 20, 25 seconds. If not, he'll have to be replaced. He comes out of every game like it's a football he game. Does. He just yeah. comes out of every game that way. That's how you're supposed to play. Played two years at Rhode Island. Danny Hurley actually recruited him to Rhode Island and took the UConn job. And Tyree stayed there and played a couple of years and followed his coach to UConn. And he is a warrior. He fits right in with what Danny Hurley's all about. 
Well, your 25-second rule isn't really in effect or being enforced. Do you get a warning? <laughs> like a flop warning? Do they, do they see the blood on the shorts? Because I think there's something to do with that, too. Let's hope not. Keep moving. We're now, we're now bandaged on both the left and the right for Tyrese Martin, so it's been a successful trip that way. Inbounds with 20. On an out-of-bounds play, you get 20 seconds on that clock to reset. And they'll go to work here, launching a three and right on. I it's like been very, very good. I like your word launch as well. well that's not a, that's the type of shot that you have to be open to take because he starts it at waist level. A very low release for Sahonis. Isaiah Whaley will get it down low to Sonogo. He's made a living down there this week, and that one was about as deep as he's got it today in the middle of a paint. It's, it's really amazing how many times a game Sonogo catches it right on top of the restricted arc in front of the rim. Scores before he ever gets the ball. Foul. 15-22 to go. Foul on Isaiah Whaley. Brown Jones will shoot two as we continue from Atlantis in a two-point game. <clears throat> this may sound mad, but the Zags might be bluer than the Blue Bloods. Two great teams. Gonzaga and Duke. Two diaper dandies. Oh, oh. Experience Gonzaga Duke. Tonight at 10.30 on ESPN. Beautiful, man. Things roll your way. You're going to watch the entire game. Uh, things are rolling my way. I can, I can feel it. They have been bluer than the Blue Bloods, Gonzaga, the last few years. They sure have. Is Baylor a Blue Blood? They're, they're quickly becoming one. Yeah. They yeah. quickly are becoming one. They sure play the game like a Blue Blood. And what a battle for Atlanta's championship by Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears. And, and typical of Scott Drew, he tweeted out just a few minutes ago, congratulations, Baylor family. He, he's all about others. I'll give you his number so you all can talk about that. Who, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> is that part of the Jimmy Others Yourself? Is that, is that what you're getting at? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Free throw good. The press is coming. Tied at 35, 15, 22 to go. Base guard with a center fielder. UConn may need some help. Now they can let him. That's a walk. That's a walk. Yeah, it sure speed was. You up. Yep. VCU, they will change their press look every now and then and just throw you off a little bit. They'll show face guard, let you get in, and trap the life out of you. A surprise trap that gets Tyrese Martin going too fast. You can see how much joy Mike Rhodes takes in what his team does on the floor defensively. And I think the, the irritant nature of it, they love that. As you can see, it's affecting UConn. R Ravi, at, at any level in coaching, when you can get your guys to play that hard all the time, you can flat out coach. And I walk away from Battle for Atlantis knowing that Mike Rhodes can flat out coach. I knew it coming in. Solid confirmation the last three days. Now let's see. They went to Sonogo last time. He sets the high screen this time. See if they feed it to him again, as you said, just about the top of that restricted arc area. The prime real estate on the court. Well, that's Martin, a, that's, that's offensive. A push off with that elbow. That's what I mean about the irritating nature. Yeah. We saw the slap of the ball by Jackson. We saw Martin walk. We see the elbow there to push off. It gets to you, doesn't it? Absolutely, it does. And the, the black jerseys are just relentless as an official. If you go back and watch that last call, you get your eyes on the defender, you officiate the defense, keep your eyes on the de defense, defense, boom, who initiated the contact? Easy call to make. Tyrese Martin sits down, he's got three fouls. And Whaley's going to cause a foul there. This is VCU's game right now. In spite of the fact that the scoreboard says it's tied, this is their style of play. Yeah, they are much more comfortable with a push and shove, jack your jaw style than, than UConn is right now. There's no flow, there's no rhythm to the game. I still believe UConn is more than capable of handling a game like this, but 
This VZU team is hard to put away. And as you said, as great as they are on the defensive end, they are limited offensively. You look at the numbers today. VCU is 13 of 38. They're shooting 34%. They've made one three. And are not exactly lighting it up from the free throw line either. Ravi, VCU's offense, number 94 percentile in the country in terms of how poor they are in their half-court offense. They're in the bottom 6% according to Synergy. They make up for it, though, on the other end. The great switching, though, and they are so quick. Sonogo down low. Stolen. And swept by Kern. And the alertness and the quickness and the strength to rip that ball from Sonogo. Haven't had success driving in this game, have they? No. Nope. They may have uh, walked and got away with it. Sonogo has it, and that's a frustration foul by Stockard. I'm with you on Sonogo and how well he moves his feet side to side. And we've seen him take out and hard hedge and sprint back and take away the low post presence. We've seen him guard dribblers. We've seen him take on guards the last three days and do a really good job of staying low and being quick and strong. About six, seven and a half, maybe 240. Yeah, he listed at six nine, but I hear you. Big boy, he's not six nine. Like I've stood beside him, I mean, he's closer to six, seven and a half, but he is a load. <laughs> suffocating. It is suffocating defense. And the bench goes crazy because they feel like Sonogo has been fouled on every attempt to pitch a tent down there. That time they got Deloach. That was the loudest round of applause we've had all game. Well, VCU is doing a tremendous job of circling the post on Sonogo, changing up their looks in terms of how they're gardening with quickness. And Nichols is fronting him right now, and then he'll spin off and play behind, just giving different looks. Gaffney kicks. This is Pauly. That's his game. Whaley went way up to get it. Missed there the second time, and he falls to the floor. After got numbers knocked again. down. Yep. You got him again. You got five on four. Messed it up in the first half. What do you do in the second half? Throw Messed it, it up again. Throw it into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> so the numbered break has not worked out well for VCU in this game. They're better off playing five on six. <laughs> That's twice now. They're not comfortable when it says five on four. Oh, no, they're not. No, they are not. Play through it, coach. I know you will. Your kids will, too. First turnover this half for the Rams. Hawkins back into the game. They'll go get him. Watch out. Got it. It's a honus. Well, you could have called a foul. They didn't. A rebound put back. That's short. Whaley grabs it. And Sahona is going to get called for a technical. Was that the second? Was that a after the flop, the flop warning? Warning. Did Sahona go down after he shot it? That's the one I thought that he could have called a foul on. It certainly seemed like there was contact here. Watch after Sahona shoots the ball. Yeah, I, mean, I think he did try to sell it. He jumps forward a little bit. I don't think there's any contact on him that made him fall to the ground. And Jamie Lucky right on top of the flop warning. And you have to protect the shooter, Ravi, till they come back down on the ground. But the shooter has no right at all to jump out of his airspace, out of his cylinder, try to initiate contact or try to sell contact with a foot going out. I think it's a good call by Jamie Lucky. I would say, Jimmy, the challenge with the flop or the warning or the call, uh -huh. if you just went the other way and ignored and you it. just ignored it. Just yeah, ignored that's the it. other way to go about it. Just ignore it and play on. You are asking for somebody to, to get into the subjective. Did, did he flop? Did he not? I, I, yep. If you just assume he, there's either a foul or that's it, you don't have to ever worry about this conversation. What you're trying to get out of the game, go is that yeah, he threw it on the out-of-bounds line. Bounce passing on the out-of-bounds line. Is trying to, de to deceive the official and making their job even more difficult than it is. You, you can't make those mistakes, Ravi, in a close game. 
bounce past the ball out of bounds. So much of this game is feeling as uh, discombobulated as any you've seen in a while. And that's not just on VCU's defense either. It's contributed to it, but it's just been sloppy. And foul, Building. too many fouls are being called all day. Gaffney wrapped up Williams Jr. Great take. Oh, that's high because yeah. Hawkins got real up. That's not easy. Nick Kern's a good player. A, a, a really good athlete is going to be a really good player is what he is right now. He's just a freshman out of St. Louis. Trapping, trapping. Go, go, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. They were trying. How do you beat this pressure? Move the ball quickly? Yep, move the ball quickly and keep really good spacing because the closer you are as an offensive player, the easier the trap is going to come. UConn by one after the Cole lay-in. UConn five fouls, VCU three. Sonogo, another nudge. Oh, and wow. yeah, Jamie Lucky calls the foul. He kind of overruled Jeb Hartness, who was saying stepped out of bounds. Sixth UConn foul. Sonogo to the bench. That's a big foul because he steps out of bounds because Sonogo knocked him out of bounds. <laughs> what that was. That's a good call. Sonogo has three, Martin has three. Two key players for Connecticut. Oh, he's wide open at the rim. We are fouling, or the fouls are being called at more than one per minute rate. The seventh team foul, so VCU will shoot. And I don't know, a lot of times referees will try to take control of a game when they think it may be getting out of control, but the number of fouls is disproportionate. It's a big advantage for VCU because they, they struggle to score just out of pure half-court offense. And they will be shooting free throws now the last 12 minutes yeah. of this game. When we come back, the play of ball will be at a higher level. It has to be. Absolutely. 38-37, Connecticut by one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Here from Atlantis is brought to you by Lowe's. And PlayStation. Play has no limits. We'll kick the play up when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Saturday night, we got ourselves the Bedlam game, 116th edition. That is on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Quickie quiz, Jimmy. Last three and a half minutes combined. More points, more turnovers, more fouls. I'm going to say more fouls. Eight fouls. Okay. Seven points. Okay. Seven turnovers. Here's your answer. You win. Last three and a half minutes, seven points, seven turnovers, eight fouls. eight fouls. That's not clean basketball. UConn with 14 turnovers in this game, Ravi. They're one above their average on the year. And right away, yeah. another foul. Fouls are still winning. You don't get any points for fouls, right? No, but at some point you have to quit fouling. I mean, they're, they're, they're calling what's going on. There's just a ton of fouls on the floor. Paul went up to tip his own shot in, and he got fouled. Fouled. <laughs> yeah, RJ Cole is just, he's all about winning. Really good job as a point guard to get in there and get the dirty basket for his guys. Deloach with the foul. He pull, pushed him off. It's amazing that Cole had a chance after missing it to be the first one to get the basketball off the glass. It is. 
He's just a fearless kid, though. Love his DNA. I think his pulse drives this UConn Husky team from that lead guard spot. We talked about he's played for both Danny Hurley and Bob Sr. at St. Anthony's High School, so hard to rattle. Two in white. UConn by three. We go down and back without a foul. No. You're right. We did go 24 seconds without a whistle. Right, there's just a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, size your guy up and try to make a play in this game because the defenses are so good. They keep you from running plays. They keep you from running sets. So now you're bringing the official into the game with all the one-on-one -on -one drives and the tough plays being made. But without knowing it, I think VCU, Jimmy, uh -huh. would just as soon foul then give up a basket that, that, because this this plays right to where they are, who they are. They don't score very easily. We're, we'll live in a foul game. Sure. We're good with that. And we'd rather foul than have you guys make layups or three-pointers. Ten on the shot clock for Cole. And again, a quick double. Gaffney. He just fell down, and they called a foul there. Yeah, he, he fell down and made it look like a foul at the end of the play, but uh, it's, it's an ugly game, and ugly games are, are very difficult to officiate. Just constant contact on every cut. Even, even, even the fouls that aren't being called in this game are relentless. You just watch the off-ball body blows are being delivered, much less the ones that are obvious being called. UConn has outscored VCU 14 to 9 in the second half. Gaffney's second free throw is good, so he makes one of two, and the lead is four. Plenty of time left. None had a big first half, right? None did. He had 11. And the basket put up and in by Williams. You will run and jump. If you turn your back bringing that ball up, that second defender is coming quick. Good job by Gaffney to keep forward face. Whaley the roll. That's a clean block by Williams. Kept alive, and it's VCU basketball. That's two trips without a foul. Yeah, Cole reached there. He knew he was blown by. None was on his way to the rack. But every foul now for UConn. Shoots one. That's number nine. No, he, that's a good play, right? Yeah, he almost Vert lost it on the way up. Yeah, that's a, just a, a verticality play by Williams. He's got the right to go straight up. Uh, I agree with you. Whaley kind of lost the ball. Just the kind of ball that exploded on him as he went up. Whaley joins the three foul club. He, Martin, who's back into the game, and Sonogo play with three fouls, and none picks up his 12th point. He's four of six from the free throw line. Originally committed to Iowa State, did Jaden Nunn. And with the coaching change, he ends up at VCU. Just thrown into the fire right now with an injury to Ace Baldwin, who's supposed to come back maybe mid-December, the starting point from last year. What a recovery by Curry. If you're watching a football game, you're watching your cornerback, and you yep. say, no way he gets there. Curry, no way he gets there. And he got and he to got the ball. There. VCU is so good at baiting you into thinking something's yeah. open and yeah. it's not. It's a good point. Just waiting on it. But what'd you say? He said VCU none. <laughs> <laughs> Get 
get it up. He does. Jackson went to get it, but it was tipped back up and in. VCU back on top, 43-41. How about the quickness? The quickness of none to shoot it, go get it, and get it back up again. And you can't flinch in this game. I'm just telling you, that's a, it. It ain't pretty. It's ugly. But if you flinch, you're going to get a. You're going to lose. Walk out of here again with a loss. Gaffney, Martin, corner had a chance. Good play. Got Whaley him. had great position underneath, and he laid it up and in. A really good find by Martin. He's such a hard cover. Does so many things from that two guard spot. Just bullies his way to passing spots, shot spots. And you're finding out about your guys right now with 8.33 to go in this game, both, both Mike and Danny. You didn't make it to the championship game. You come in here, the building's not really alive and electric. Who wants to fight? Who wants to compete? And who wants to make a play? Good shot fake sells it. Whaley just got snuck inside there of Keyshawn Curry. Jamie Lucky just looked over to the UConn bench and politely asked everybody to sit down. Coaches. Really good play. Stockard, he wanted to go over his shoulder, and then he turned around. Gaffney's ahead of the field. Contact there, heavy too. Stockard got him. And Gaffney will shoot too after taking a little walk around. That is all on VCU's guards, not rotating back. Stockard, you knew the shot was going to go up as a post player, and VCU just got attached watching the ball. Stockard scores, and then Stockard is actually the guy back to challenge the shot, and there's no way that should happen, Ravi. There's, there's no way, and Stockard's saying the same thing. Come on, man. I score, and I'm responsible for defensive transition. That's not in anybody's playbook. Stockard picks up his fourth foul, and Gaffney's first free throw rattles three times before falling off. Sonogo will come back in. He'll play with three fouls. Stockard will go out. So Sonogo has a big-time size advantage with his bulk over Deloach, who's in there. Gaffney again makes the second, missed the first. I've been blown away by the fight and the effort that I've seen on this floor the last couple of days. That, that championship game, mm. I know Michigan State lost. They, they, have, they have nothing to hang their head about. They absolutely fought their rear ends off, as did Baylor. Teams play the game the right way. That's all I care about. Just ran out of gas. And they yeah. were a victim of Baylor's depth. Deloach, look out. He avoided. Jackson, who also avoided Williams. VCU by 3, 740 to go. I tell you what VCU does, Ravi. They stick their nose right on your numbers and just say, let's play ball on the defensive end. Nose on the numbers. They don't back away from you. Gaffney lost it, found it, threw it up, and didn't make it. And loose ball to VCU. Got numbers again, and they've not been great in this situation. <laughs> so they know oh, themselves. Yeah, they, yep. they, they know themselves. Rim, rim, put the brakes on. A double staggered up top and a hard hedge it. Man, if you can screen it, he's open. Man, you should have screened. Should have screened Sonogo. You had the Spain action all set. Watch Cole out. got a hand on it. Over here it goes. Five seconds on the shot clock, 6.55 on the game clock. That means it's time for a timeout here in Atlantis. The Baylor Bears take care of Michigan State in game number one. Just an outstanding effort. Kendall Brown put on quite a show. Flagler from the outside, Cryer from the outside. They all contributed. And in the end, it just felt like they wore down Michigan State. They own the second half. They got to dance with Jimmy's dance partners. Junkin New was on the floor. You feel like you should have just been out there with him? I, I do. I'm, my feelings are hurt that they didn't ask me. I do have a standing offer to join him full time, by the way. We'd like, the, we would like you to, we encourage you to take him up on that. <laughs> that, that Baylor team's a real deal now. 
because they, they they beat a really good Michigan State team that, that should be ranked. There are not 25 teams better in the country than Michigan State. No, they had five on the shot clock when we started, and they took it with six. So that's a violation. <laughs> it's better than a foul. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Still led to the whistle. Not the official's fault. VCU, I'm telling you, man, they impose their will on you, and then they get under your skin and affect you. And that's why they're always in that March Madness NCAA tournament bracket. VCU, you just see them play, and you realize they're just nobody wants to play no. them. I mean, consistently that way, too. Show your hands. Show your hands. Here you go, Martin, three. No good, way off. And that did not hit the rim. Hurley said it did. That, that appeared actually, now again, from where we sit, Jimmy, it appeared to kick off the rim. And Jamie Lucky has, has, has heard enough from both. Yeah, I think that did. Hit I think the it rim. did too. See the backboard move yeah, grazed prior the back to that. Side. I mean, the rim moves. Yeah, that, that glazed the rim. Danny Hurley was, was right on top of it. I know coaches try to sell it, but yeah, that, that's, that, that hits the rim. Hits the rim and then the backboard. And again, Jamie Lucky, veteran official. He's over half court other side of the basket and there is an official on this side Jamie was the one I believe who made the initial call talked about it I believe in the Michigan State game all, all that coaches want and really all the game asked for from the head of officials on down is the right official in the right position making the right call what you don't want what we can't have is the wrong official in the wrong position making the wrong call they have a small screen to work off over there. It just, Ravi, from what we've seen, our screens are pretty clear. It looks like it hits the rim first. Yeah. So Sonogo came up with it. That's the right call. They should have like one second came off before they had yeah, 19 on the shot clock is correct as well. Where are you with your special teams right now if you're UConn out of bounds under? Cole scored earlier off the Kansas Jayhawk type play where you sprint your guy out from underneath. Snow goes always a threat. Your half court offense isn't working. Can you score off special teams right now? Here comes Cole. The old Jayhawk play. Bam. Worked again. Good call. Bam. Tied at 47, six minutes and five seconds to play. What was that number that only Baylor was able to get to? As far as 60. Uh, points, 60. 60. There's a three from the corner. All of a sudden, the basketball game's breaking out offensively. Vince Williams. <laughs> Yeah, you're better off with ghost screens or fast slips out of those ball screens for VCU. Sonogo camped. Pauly had it blocked. Sonogo gets it. Still 10 on the shot clock. Now he decides, I'll just back the world in. He finds Martin no foul off VCU. Six seconds to go. Do you have a counter for the out-of-bounds underplay that R.J. Cole has ran twice? Because right now, VCU is vulnerable to it. And Danny Hurley's going to change up the look. Let Jackson take it out. I would still keep my eyes on R.J. Cole. A side screen, another side screen. There he is. In the corner, and he's going to have to shoot it here with three on the shot clock. He runs into the lane, lays it up and in. Yep. R.J. Cole, not a three-point shot, but a potential three-point play. But you go to the guy that makes plays, and it's R.J. Cole time right now for UConn. I talked about it day one in the double overtime. He's the most important guy on the floor from the six minute mark under. He scored as an out of bounds trigger guy. Danny Hurley changes the look, gets it into his playmaker in the corner and says, use your left hand. I've got you on the right side of the floor. Go get us a basket. 
Cole has 21 points. He's 7 of 14, now 22 points. 5 of 6 from the free throw line. It's been outstanding. Remember, it was a concussion. Cole suffered last year Big E semifinals. And Dan Hurley's the, used that. It changed the entire yeah, changed complex the of the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah, that's a foul there. Polly reached in, and that's a foul. The other part of this, when there are so many fouls called in the mind of the player, right, it becomes an expectation. If I'm going to drive, and I, there's kind of, well, yeah. every other no, thing's a right. foul. Yeah, but, but you can't, you got to, you got to shake that off as a player and, and not expect the whistle to bail you out. Because as soon as you do, you're going to have a turnover going the other way. Two shots, Brown Jones. Two of four from the line today. He knocks down the first one. VCU by two. Cole's too good to get his back to the defense and allow a run and jump to come. Watch out. Oh, whoop, whoop. Help him, help him, help him recall timeout. Yeah. It's not just the full court run and jump you're concerned with. Once you come across the timeline, VCU really dials up that heat. Ball game. Day three in Atlantis. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Builds a better mower, mow with an attitude. Movement premium watches and accessories that don't break the bank. And Fubo TV, watch live sports and TV try free at FuboTV.com. What do you see in the last 452 of what has been an ugly basketball game? Well, neither team's given in, which you cannot do that right now. You know, the ball's got to go in. I, I I just trust, and that's a huge word with a coach and his guys, I just trust R.J. Cole uh -huh. maybe as much as anyone else on the floor right now in this game. They said that in their first game, and he was the one that really delivered against Auburn in the double overtime. Pauly, three. Contested air ball. VCU comes away with it, leading by two. Almost like he was trying to draw a foul yeah. in the corner as much as shoot it. Now what happens in the game when the whistle's blowing all the time? Yeah, good point. Open corner. Really good job that time by Martin. Kept his ground, didn't take the ball fake, and there's Jackson's hand. It's going to be out off Andre Jackson. Isaiah Whaley back in. Tyler Pauly goes out. Now what does VCU have as a scoring option? Baseline out of bounds under with nine seconds. Williams is their leading scorer, 10 in black. Can you get him freed up for a shot? They get on the ball. And Whaley's all over him. Nope. He just looked at his clock to see three. And Jackson had it, and he'll keep it. Sudogo working to the baseline. Three black shirts around him, and he forced it up. Nowhere to go, Ravi. Just, I, I love the kid. I love his game. I love a lot of things about him, but he's got to learn it's okay to kick it out and re reverse the ball and keep the possession alive. Williams. Hard drive, Sonogo there to deflect it, but the ball right into the hands of Keyshawn Curry. They, and I'm talking about VCU, do a terrific job of cutting off of the drive. They don't stand and watch. They cut and get themselves available off the ball really well. Their lead is four. There's three minutes and three seconds to go. Cole kicks, Martin wide open, three, got it. R.J. Cole, though, gets a piece of the paint. He finds his buddy spotted up top. Time out on the floor. Bad boy mowers mow with an attitude. Finish this game with an attitude.
handful of highlights. How about the A-10? How about Iona winning? They knock off Alabama. How about Dayton winning, knocking off Kansas? So the Metro Atlantic Athletic and the A-10 showing here in these November tournaments. Yeah, and the A-10's got a chance for another one right now. Both Dayton and Kansas will be here next year. That, that's, that's, a, that's a shocker, though, right there, Dayton over Kansas. Huge shocker. Yeah, Kansas looked like one of the four or five best teams in the country. I think that's been part of the beauty of what we've had here prior to this particular game. These teams felt like they were playing late January, you know, mid-February type quality basketball. Yeah. Michigan State, Auburn execution was great. This one hasn't been that at all. But boy, they were sharp. The quality of play to me has been better early than it's been in a long, long time. I agree. Partly because college basketball is so old, but to Sean's point, Dayton's a young team. To pull that off, that is that is special. Well, this is, in the end, this is like survival of the fittest. Whoever, sur somebody's surviving this That's game, right. Jim. I don't know if they're going to win it, but they're just surviving it. Well, Iowa State and Memphis, 9.30 Eastern Time, ESPN2. That means Jalen Duran and Monty Bates, five-star freshman for Memphis. It's another team, Jimmy. If they get things gelled, they're in that Final Four conversation. De defensively, they look the part. Memphis does. It's, it's hard to say, just kind of say, this is the best defensive team in the country. Right. I'm not going to do that. I'm just saying, when I watch them play, they hard score against, man. They are long and they get after you. Full court press, they do not care. An NBA staff in the college game is what Memphis has. Three point lead for VCU, 2.20 to go. Stick your nose on the ball and stay in front of the ball. VCU does a great job of it. Cole and Whaley play catch with it. Cole trapped in the corner now. And Run that's going to be a backcourt violation right through the legs of Isaiah Whaley. They are like sharks. They should be the VCU Sharks, not the VCU Rams. Now they just surround you and chew you up. You make a mistake, they have it going the other way in a heartbeat. It feels like UConn has had several opportunities, Jimmy, when they've thrown it cross court. Rather than have that guy shoot it, he kind of holds it, allows the yeah. defense to reset. And Feels you like you get that quick shot, you'd be better off. Yes. Mike Rhodes knows, man, if he just doesn't get, that's a, a he got tripped. None went down. Hurley's looking for a travel. If there's no foul, he's saying, how is there not a travel? That, that, that is a foul. R.J. Cole trips none right in front of the officials. And VCU very fortunate they didn't get the ball taken away from off of a turnover call. But he got clearly fouled and clipped is what caused him to hit the deck. Ravi, seven seconds for VCU to work with on that shot clock. Feels like a just a gigantic possession right now. If you got a chance to push this thing out to a, a two possession game. VCU looking like holding another opponent under 60 on the year. Baylor the only team to go over that mark on them. This is a very important seven second play for both teams. Martin's on Williams. He's been their go-to guy. And they try to free him in the corner and he has it. And they turn it over, Jimmy. But that Curry took his eye off the ball to see where the defender was when the ball was heading in his direction. They're playing too fast, weren't they? Yeah. Seven seconds is an eternity, but you got time to make clean a clean catch and a clean pass or two. Eleventh turnover for VCU, 16 in the game for Connecticut. The Sonogo and RJ Cole time. That'd be my first two options in, in, in either order. And they got two point guards to, oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Turnover 17. 
anything in this hand with one hand is wrong. And Tyrese Martin, to me, looked like he tried to catch the ball with one hand. Gaffney comes out, Jackson back in. UConn with nine second half turnovers. Uh -oh. oh, there's a oh, parable pass and another turnover. Three offensive series, three turnovers. Jaden Nunn has been good, but that's just a pass with no purpose. Cole Whaley thought about it, and that ball was deflected by Sonogo. What's he going to do? He's not going to pass it. He's going to have to here, and he yep. does. Whaley will shoot a three. Find the bottom. We are tied with a minute to go. That, I, I, I'm being honest. I think that was the first pass out of the post by Sonogo in this tournament. And it came at a huge, huge time. Brown Jones, three of his own, in and out. Jackson has it, 39 seconds to go in the game, 26 on the shot clock, and Danny Hurley is going to set it up for a play he hopes will work. And Sonogo, eventually, at some point, you're just knocked on the head so many times, yeah. you have no choice. And he had no choice here. Nowhere to go, but now I've seen him force it up from that spot, too, in this yep. tournament. But he finds Whaley, who did not play yesterday, and I talked about Whaley. Can he make one three per game and end up with 25 or 30 on the year? If so, that's a big boost to UConn as another guy that can stretch you. What a time for Sonogo to find his passing skills, whether he had to or not. And a good job by Whaley to get in his vision in the high slot. Whaley's made two threes today, and he has got 10 points. He's the second leading scorer for Connecticut. Cole's got 22. All right, Coach, so who are we designing the play for? Well, it's still about R.J. Cole to me. You know, he's your closer, and you're being a baseball guy, understand what I'm talking about. But you know, his value with the ball, his value to get fouled, and his value to get in the paint, get his feet underneath him, and then make a good rim decision or a kick out. Can you get VCU in a closeout right now defensively, attack the closeout, and at worst get yourself to the free throw line? All those things Danny Hurley's talking to his guys about. The shot clock's at 26, the game clock's at 36. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. The last thing you say to both your guys right now on both clubs, go get the rebound. A costly turnover by Jaden Nunn. And there have been three costly turnovers in the last minute. There, there, there has. And you have to shake those things off, have a short memory. It's all about next play right now. One timeout left for each team. We can't take any pass for granted right now. VCU's going to blow up any dribble handoff action. 10 second differential game clock and the shot clock. 15 now, 14 on the shot clock. He wants to go at 12, and here goes the action. Yep, trust Cole to make the play. He's going to have to shoot it, and he does. No good, loose ball. Martin has it. He'll shoot it. That's no good. Five seconds to go. He's got another chance. Cole double dribbled. Not a clean possession at all by UConn. I mean, VCU's defense was dialed in and R.J. Cole travels with it in the corner. Now VCU has 1.4 to work with, or we play another five. They're going to try to inbound it right in front of the Connecticut bench. Probably going to cross guys here at midcourt, try to throw it somewhere about three-quarter court. Get it up. He got pushed. Jamie Luck is saying he caught it out of bounds and stepped out of bounds.
Now he's going to check the clock to see what's left. I think Jimmy's going to say caught it and stepped out of bounds. There was no foul. Well, if he caught it out of bounds, we're not taking time off the clock. No, I think he caught it in and stepped out with no foul. Yeah, right there, I mean, he's out with point nine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure his right foot wasn't out as well when he caught it right there. So if he caught it out of bounds, it, we're going to stay with 1.4 to go, and UConn has a chance. Yeah, that, that's, yeah they're both there's out. No, there's no time coming off. I feel pretty confident they go to 1.4. And UConn will have the ball down this end, their offensive end. It was a very difficult angle. It the sure DCU was. You had to try to throw the ball up the side. He caught the ball out of bounds. I don't see how they take time off the game clock. I mean, it's like you're th you're throwing it to the to the scorekeeper. Yep. The catch by rule has to be point three off. It's inconclusive whether he is out of bounds first. We don't have a good enough angle. 1.1 right there. Okay, so the three fans have to come off. Had he caught it out of bounds, no time would have to come off. Okay, so if you think he's, you don't know for sure if he's out of bounds when he caught it. You guys got a better look at I think he's out of bounds when he caught it. No, I mean, it's quite clear both his right his right leg is out of bounds here. Jamie Lucky's going to look at the monitor over here, which is a bigger monitor. And the original call, the one that we were told was that it was inconclusive whether he was in or out of bounds when he caught it. You can hear Jamie, the official, saying he may have been in the air when he caught it. So inconclusive whether he was in or out of bounds. He catches it there, yeah. and that right foot still may have been in the air. Yeah, but, but because he caught it in bounds, point three has to come off the clock. So now UConn has 1.1, and they have a very difficult angle trying to throw it to their end. 1.1 on the clock. Can you throw it to Sonogo right around the rim? Or Hard Jackson? Get it over Ward's hands. Get off. That's, that's horrible. A chest pass will not work in this situation. Tyrese has got to get the ball above his head. I would try to throw it to Jackson around the rim, let well, that, him go that, up, try to make that play. That was what that attempt yeah. was, and he'll do it again. Now Shoot it's it. Cole. And we will go to overtime, tied 56-56. RJ Cole just going to come off of the screen by Sonogo. Gets it, has time to shoot it. Had it off in time, it just doesn't drop. We play five more. Foul trouble is certainly going to be a factor here. You have Stockard with four, Whaley with four, a whole bunch of guys with three. And you may get another team go over that 60-point mark. Yeah, he will now. Well, where is the mindset of both ball clubs? Both of them feel like, man, we got a chance to win this thing in regulations. So now you got to get right back in there and get the fight and the heart and the DNA of your team right back where you want it and reset it. You get a chance to leave the island with two wins as opposed to just one. So UConn and VCU will play an overtime period. Neither team has shot well at all. VCU shooting 37%. They've made five three-pointers, 16 attempts. That's 31%. Connecticut's been worse. Six of 22 from deep, 27%. The offensive execution was sucked out of the game by the tenacious defense. Really, both teams started with VCU. UConn turned it up. VCU is offensively challenged. So if you're looking for a ballet when it comes to offense, you're not seeing it here. No, not at all. And the 18 turnovers by UConn has not helped their cause. 
UConn with a plus 10 rebound advantage. Helps offset those turnovers. Again, Cole kind of keep his dribble. He's stuck. And again, he's got to call a timeout. It's really odd that a veteran like Cole would find himself in that position multiple times in yeah, a game. He tried to back, he tried to back dribble out of the trap, but VCU just they just come at you when you back dribble. You got to keep yourself out of that spot right here. Keep the ball moving. Just you can't play around with it right now. That back dribble absolutely will not work. It will not work. Part of that on the other members of his team, though, if you see two guys, you watch Sonogo, if you replayed that, Sonogo just kind of runs away from him, where if yeah. he just turned around, it's at least an option for him to throw it. Everybody kind of is still getting to their position when he's in a trap. Isn't somebody else responsible for giving you an out? Yes, but now we're into overtime. We, we know how VCU plays defense. You get over there on the side by yourself and they start trapping you. You have to know that as the primary handler and you have to know that as the four guys that are outlets. You can't stand and watch like you're on press row. But R.J. Cole has to understand as an upperclassman, VCU traps you at every opportunity. You got to get the ball spun out of there one way or another and get the thing reversed. So you had to burn a timeout. And now you're down to one when your overtime period and we haven't even played 20 seconds yet. Ten on the shot clock from Jackson, who's got it dribbling out high to Martin. He goes to the hole. There's another whistle. Offensive foul against Martin. And Tyrese Martin picks up foul number four. Stalker gets outside the restricted arc. And that's those plays officials talk about. Had, had you been able to judge that play by when Martin put the plant foot down, it's a block. But because they call it like the rules written, it's a charge. Keep the ball moving. Keep the ball moving. Williams elevates for a three, doesn't get it. Jackson clears. Right, and so many hard guarded shots taken in this game by, by both teams. Again, Cole double team. That time Jackson showed Whaley three, wide open. And Isaiah Whaley knocks it down. That's his third three of the game. And Isaiah Whaley, who missed yesterday after fainting following game one, has 13 points. I'm just telling you, at the end of the regular season, if Isaiah Whaley has made 33s over the next few months, UConn can go to another level in March. Williams looks for help, finds it in Sean Curry. None now with five on the shot clock. Sonogo hedges out on him. He'll launch a three. That's way too strong. It goes to Martin. It didn't hit the rim. Cole pushed, and he lost it, but it was out of bounds when Curry tried to keep it in. He was out. Watch Whaley just getting the high slot over here. R.J. Cole sees him right now and just said, how can I get you the ball? Well, I'm not going to throw it directly to you. It's going to be a hockey assist from me to Jackson to you. Well done, well played by UConn. So now go hands to Cole, then guts in the way of none. Cole's floater, no good. They're going to keep that with Connecticut. Do you go with a Kansas Jayhawk out of bounds play in the in the far corner? A little more difficult to pull off. But keep an eye on Cole after he inbounds it. Whaley wide open. Oh, at the free throw line, hesitated, and that may have cost him. How about Martin going up to try to deflect it in? I think Whaley was shocked how open yeah, he, he was. was. Brown Jones thought about the three, now spins inside, lost it. Sonogo has it. Jackson stays in. 
2.30 to go. Connecticut by three. And he's trying to call for Horn's action, which is the double up. Hasn't communicated yet. His guys are just making plays. And a double team, and Brown Jones fouls Cole. That's a recipe for failure. Cole, such a good free throw shooter. He's made five of six today. R.J. Cole was the MEAC Player of the Year at Howard University as a sophomore. And he's a kid that has transferred up, and his game has transferred up with him. Make the case that he is the most important guy to UConn over the next three or four months. I don't think they have a guy that can replace him. I know a lot of folks would say you can't place, replace Sonogo either, but you certainly can't replace number two. Well, they learned that lesson last they year. They sure did. And, and, in, and in the semifinal, correct? When he fouled out? Yep. That late foul cost him against Michigan State badly. Question is, over the course of the next couple of months, can you develop somebody so that if it happens again, yep. you're not dead in the water? It, it's Gaffney, and then Hawkins has to become the, a big guard that can handle the ball a little bit as well. You got a five-point lead right now for UConn. Just stay locked in defensively and do not foul. One of the things that Connecticut has had a hard time doing, they did it against Auburn. Timeout by Rhodes. Could have won that game several times against Michigan State. They led by five late. Couldn't hold the lead. Here yep. we are with a five-point lead with 2.11 to go. It becomes an art to finishing a game. Yes, it does. And you now UConn, I think they have, they have a tremendous mental strength about them. I, I don't. <clears throat> I don't think they're a team that gets shook. But you certainly want to win the close ones early. How's your voice doing? <laughs> I'm all choked up about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing nope. buttons, grabbing some water, making sure we can talk. Where does, where, and at the end of it all, where does Mike Rose go with the basketball right now? He doesn't care about something in my throat. Where's the ball going to go right now? What feels like a must have at least a point off this possession. Stockard has been good around the rim. He has not been bothered by a little bit of height advantage that Sonogo throws at him. Sean Curry, they go down to Woodard. Rolls in the middle, deflected by Martin. Nine on the shot clock, and Williams takes an ill-advised three. Had nine seconds on yeah. the shot clock. They tried to go to Sonogo. I mean, they tried to go right at Sonogo. And defensively, he has held up. That is a collision that yep. something had to happen. Things got blown up. Timeout, Connecticut. <laughs> that that had right. to be For something. so many fouls called in this game. <laughs> when you see Bobby's just flying, <laughs> that no has, whistle. Uh, somewhere in the rule book, this play is talked about. Bam! <laughs> the explosion. The concrete wall of Adama <laughs> Sonogo. We've learned oh nothing else goodness. in our trip to Atlantis. There is no such thing as a cement wall. <laughs> it's concrete. Sonogo just <laughs> blew up both. His guy and the opponent. And everybody lives to go on to the next play. 18 seconds on the shot clock for UConn. Just kind of feels like they're a made basket away from locking this thing up in overtime. UConn coaches and some of their team managers are assisting in cleaning the perspiration off the floor. Where all the bodies fell? Where all the bo <laughs> where all the evidence is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Crime scene. <clears throat> all right. Side out of bounds. Try the same play again. Bodies didn't fly that time. Ten on the shot clock for Cole. Going to be trapped. Yep. Whaley's open Move underneath. It. They didn't yeah. see him. And now Martin with three will launch. 
No good. Sonogo has it. He'll go up and come up way short. Whistle blew it. They get a foul. Is Sonogo going to shoot a couple? Well, that didn't appear as if anybody touched him, but it looks like Adama Sonogo is going to go to the free throw line. I, I, I don't, there was no foul. There was, the, the ball came up short, but it was not because he was fouled. But UConn, Ravi, they were number four offensive rebounding rate team in the country last year. And their top three offense rebounders are back. They're going to be in the top ten again this year in that area. Stockard will foul out of the game. They give him his fifth. Sonogo will go to the free throw line. He's an 87% free throw shooter this year. Why are we huddled up talking on both benches? Trying to take advantage of any second they can to communicate to their players. These are big free throws for Sonogo. He can stretch it to a three possession game right now with 1.23 to go. That's how big this one is right here. There it is. Adama Sonogo knocks them both down. Tyrese Martin trying to pressure. And they get the ball over. That was, a, that was a walk right here, but Danny Hurley's right. They missed a walk on Williams. Lock in, defend without fouling, clean up the miss. The lead is seven. And a block. Forty personal fouls in this game that have been called. Twenty by each team. <laughs> the style of the game, the flavor of the game, the rhythm of the game favored VCU from the opening tip. And UConn trying to hang in there and win a game that had no rhythm at all. And they will have to do that in the Big East a few times this year as well. Cole. Williams foul. His coach did not want him to do that, and not that guy. R.J. Cole, an 87% free throw shooter on the year at the start of the day. He's made seven of eight. 24 points. He only got two assists in the game. He has two turnovers. Because, Ravi, it's been a one-on-one -on -one game. There's not a lot of opportunities for assists when you can't run offense and you're just having to make plays. The assist numbers will come down overall. Danny is imploring his team not to foul on the defensive end. 25 for R.J. Cole. He's not imploring as hard as I'm imploring. One minute to go, 65-57. No, no, that's not. I, I disagree with the call. Andre Jackson has shown his hands. He's a legal defender. He's moving. I thought the offensive player came into him. Andre Jackson, move your feet. Boom, that's initiated by the offense. Defender's got to have the ability to move on the floor. Nunn's had a good game, hadn't he? For, for a kid that should be the backup point guard, getting backup minutes. 16 points, 8 rebounds. He's really grown and matured these past three days for Mike Rhodes. Gaffney's yeah, got to pass it out of that trap quickly. He's got to pass it out of that trap quickly, and he calls for traveling. Boy, hard that Gaffney and Cole continue to get trapped. And again, I still think, Jimmy, tell me, as a coach, you got to provide outlets for their guys when they get trapped. Uh, what you don't do is throw the ball inbounds in the coffin corner like UConn just did. 
I mean, you, you just don't do it. That's the only way that VCU stays alive in the game. Lead is six, 53 to go. Missed the layup. Oh my gosh, they're gonna get a foul on the attempted follow-up. They call that on Gaffney. This is unbelievable. How many total fouls? Well, prior to the last couple, there were 40. Now there's 42. And there's going to be at least one or two more. Here are the numbers. Don't look at the screen. But 39 made field goals, more fouls, and just five fewer turnovers than balls through the basket. How about there's that? The offensive rebound off your own missed free throw. And now the ball on the floor. To Waddle. Wow. Yep. He and he gave him a timeout. No, he, he gave him a timeout. Good job by Mike Rhodes to call the timeout, knowing that the travel call was probably going to come. I don't know. We can't we can't see when Mike called it, but certainly that's a travel call on Williams where he has possession of the ball and he rolls over with it. To me, that's a travel. I, I don't think they didn't I, seem yeah. inclined to call a travel. No, I, I don't think the, I don't think the timeout was recognized by the official before the travel occurred. Regardless, it's a six-point game, and VCU's going to all have the ball side out of bounds. Game started at 1.30. Yep. Local time, it's 4.04. 4.04. VCU has drivers at all five spots on the floor. None takes it, no contact. Layup, no good. Jackson the rebound. And Martin has it with 33 seconds to go. Cole spins himself right into yeah, a jump, jump ball. ball. Possession arrow, VCU. So many mistakes as Connecticut continues to struggle finishing a game off. And look at RJ Cole, takes it up on the side, spins right into the hard trap. You have to know it's coming. i got to imagine the film breakdown of this game. It, it, it will, the film breakdown of this game will last longer than the actual game. That's a long time. Still six-point game, 25 yeah. to go. Just stay above the three-point line right now if you're UConn. Curry no good. That is a foul, and that'll send UConn to the line with 17 to go. And that should emphasize, should, should. do it. Danny Hurley told me, seems like six hours ago, which was about 20 minutes before tip, I'm just trying to do all we can to get out of here with a win and get home. Nice. It has been, we have been beaten up. We, we have beaten some up and we've been beaten up. Connecticut has not missed a free throw in overtime. They're six of six and now seven of seven. 67-59. Check that 66-59. We have time for three more fouls. Make two cuts, get open. Know the contact's coming. 
Look out. Loose ball. VCU has it. And now all of a sudden, it's a four-point game with six seconds to go. And here's Whaley ahead of the field. That's a foul. He lays it in. F1. That's a foul. Could escalate to an F1 because he's in a vulnerable position off the floor. Well, the guy that fainted after game one, didn't play game two, has had himself an incredible game with that lay-in. Isaiah Whaley. Yeah, there you go. I think you stick with a common foul. Our player of the game brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. We're going to give it to R.J. Cole with 26 points, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. I'll tell you what, though, Isaiah Whaley was enormous in this Yes, game. he was. And you wonder if he played against Michigan State, would the outcome have been different yesterday? Yeah. 70 to 63 is your final score. Connecticut over VCU. That is our final score for Jimmy Dykes, our entire crew here. I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks, everyone, for joining us here in Atlantis and for our entire crew behind the scenes. Thanks for all the hard work that was done. We'll send you to the studio Zubin, John Crispin, and Sean Farnham. Take care, everybody.